Alrighty guys, so up to this point we've covered creating the catalog, importing your files into Lightroom, but we haven't talked about how to get the files out of Lightroom. So we're gonna, this chapter is going to be dedicated to all the different export functions that Lightroom has. Uh, and then from there we're going to move on to learning the library module in more depth. And what I want to do is show you guys the basics of the export dialog box, and then I'll show you guys how to set up some presets for different export functions. So let's get to the export dialog box by selecting any image, just any of them are fine. Um, I'm going to go to File, and click export or I can hit control shift E or I can also get to the same place by just clicking the export button in the library module. It's going to bring my export dialog box up. I'm going to shrink all these and let me go over just from top to bottom left to right these different options. So number one we have export to and we have hard drive selected. If I click this open you can see that there's two other pieces of software here, NIK Software and Photomatix. These are just other pieces of software that I have that actually integrate with Lightroom. So as you guys are install, installing other plugins and other pieces of software, they may integrate to Lightroom so that you can export directly to those pieces of software. But for right now, that's not important. We're going to learn how to export to the hard drive. That's really what's most important here. On the left side, we see our presets. Now, some of these are presets that came with Lightroom. For example, these Lightroom presets. If I expand it, you can see which presets it comes with. Some of them are built in with the software that I've installed, the NIK and the Photomatix. And some of them are user presets that I've created on my own. Each one of these presets just has predefined settings over here so that I can quickly do whatever I need. If I, want, if I need to export some for print size, if I need to export for web size, I can just click one button, choose my location, and I'm done. Down here we can add new presets, remove presets, um, and then on the right side we have our actual settings, and these are all the settings that we're going to be defining right now. And let me go over these settings now, and then we're going to go in the next video, we're going to show you the presets and actually define settings for specific functions, such as printing and, and web size uh, files and everything like that. So the first set is your export location. This is going to say it's going to export to a specific folder. If I click this open, I can have different options, such as choose a folder later. And it says right next to it, useful for presets. What this means is you can set up a preset, and you can select this option to choose a folder later. And that way, it's not going to save the, the export location into that preset. It'll save choose folder later. So once you click the preset, then you would choose the folder that you want to export to. Otherwise, if you have a specific folder selected, it's going to actually export to that folder with every preset that you make. So if you make a, a preset that says export to desktop, well, every time you click that button, it's going to change the folder to desktop. All right, so we can choose the folder by clicking choose here, or we can also click this dra uh, drop down menu and get a list of recently used folders. So we can also click choose to choose a different one. I'm just going to leave it on the desktop for now. Now we have another checkbox right below that says put in subfolder. Now what I like to do typically is I pick the, the parent folder of the project that I'm working on. So right now is it, if I was working on the Lightroom tutorial catalog and I wanted to export here, I'd pick that as my parent folder and whenever I want to export into a folder underneath, I would just select put in subfolder and then name the folder right there. It's a very useful function. If you wanted to add those uh, that folder and the images back to the catalog, you'd have this selected. I pretty much never use this option though. So, and then also adding to stack, same thing. I also I don't use these options as well. If there's existing files, it'll say ask what to do. That is what the default setting is. You can also say to choose a new name for the exported file, or you can say to overwrite without warning, which will automatically just write over everything, or you can say to skip it. If you choose any one of these, it's not going to ask you. So I, I typically would leave it on ask what to do. So with each setting, with, with every time you export, you can say specifically that time what you want it to do. All right, let's go to our next option, the file naming. This is another place, once again, we went over file naming on import. You can also rename files directly in the Lightroom library module. You can also file name when you're exporting as well. So this is just, it works the exact same way. You can pick a different setting, do a custom name, do a sequence, whatever you guys want. Um, it, it works, it's pretty self-explanatory. So let's just go beyond that. Um, let's skip that. It's pretty self-explanatory, so we'll just skip it. Um, but right at the bottom right, you can see the extension being lowercase or uppercase. This really doesn't matter. This is just the file extension. I like to leave it lowercase, but it's a, really just a preferential item. Next are file settings. These file settings are going to be really important. This is going to contain your format that you're exporting to, whether it's JPEG, Photoshop, TIFF, DNG, or the original file, whatever that original was. You'll notice that if I have selected the original, all my options disappear because there's no options to select because I'm ex exporting it as the original file. The Lightroom settings, everything will not be applied. Any one of these other formats, though, will, however, keep the, uh, the Lightroom settings that you've applied to it. You can set the quality, which works just like how it 
kind of says quality if you reduce it it's going to shrink the file size if you increase it it's going to increase the file size so depending on what the use is if you're ex exporting for print you want to leave that at 100 percent if you're exporting for web you probably want to reduce it maybe to 60 to 80 percent you can also use this limit file size for the web which is really nice because you can actually limit the file size to a specific number which will automatically maximize the quality to fit it in whatever amount of space you define here so and this is in kilobytes so I specify okay I want this to be for web so I want every image to be at 150k or below and it will automatically set in the quality settings for each specific image to reach that that goal of 150k per image the color space is the output color space. For the most part, you want to leave this on sRGB. We talked about before how if you need to work in CMYK, you can't actually output to CMYK. You can also load up additional color spaces, like if your lab has a certain color space they want you to be printing in, you can load them up there. Now, include video files. Lightroom does support the importing of video files, although you can't do anything with those files in Lightroom. But when you're exporting, if you click this option, it'll uh, keep those video files in the export as well. So it's not going to do anything to them. It'll just export them back out to whatever location you specify. If you unclick it, it won't export the video files if you happen to have any selected. All right, next are image sizing. Image sizing is pretty uh, self-explanatory. If you have it selected, it's going to resize the images to fit whatever criteria you specify. If you don't have it selected, then it's not going to resize, but you still need to set the resolution. So if you're trying to go for print, then you want it to be at least between 240 to 300 DPI, which I would, I would set 300 pixels per inch for print because a lot of printers can use that resolution. Some printers uh, may only use up to 240, but you want to be safe and keep it at 300. Um, also this resize to fit if I'm oh one uh, another resolution that's common is for screen screen resolution is 72 pixels per inch if I'm resizing I might resize say to make these all email size images so maybe I want them to be 600 width or 600 height in pixels you can also use different units of measurement such as inches or centimeters as well I keep it on pixels because it's it's the easiest to understand for me um, and then you specify the width and height if I have width and height selected it's gonna match the long edge so for example on a on a landscape image the width will be 600 pixels the height's gonna be 400 but on a on a height like on a portrait image the height's gonna be the long edge and so the height will be 600 while the other one's 400 okay but you can also set different ways to resize so such as the dimensions you can set it to set the long edge and uh, this works kind of the same way if I have in width and height if I have these both set to 600 it works the exact same way as setting the long edge to 600 you can also set the dimensions based on the short edge or on megapixels as well if I click this don't enlarge option so if I have resize to fit selected and then I click don't enlarge that means that if for example let me give you an example. If I go width and height and I select this in inches and I put 12 inches there, 12 inches there. Well, if an image is smaller than 12 inches, it would automatically enlarge that image to the the width or the height that I have selected unless I click don't enlarge. If I click don't enlarge, then regardless of if the image is smaller than the dimensions, it's not going to enlarge it. Okay, down to our next option, the output sharpening. I like to have some amount of output sharpening for screen resolution items. I always do high. Um, when I'm doing matte paper, I like to do probably low and, and glossy paper. Whenever I'm doing for print, I usually do low because I've already, for the most part, prepared that image for uh, print. So I've already done my sharpening, everything like that. And for the most part, I don't even really need additional sharpening. But if you wanted to have additional sharpening on output, this is where you'd select it. Okay, for metadata, you can minimize the embedded metadata by clicking this button, which will basically take out all the shooting information in that shot. So if you don't want people to know like your aperture, your shutter settings, your ISO, all that kind of information, click minimize embedded data. This next option, right keywords, is Lightroom hierarchy. This is kind of confusing, but basically what this means is if you check this option, the keywords that you put into these files, like let's say for example you create a hierarchy of keywords, and what that would look like was let's say we have a parent keyword that's USA, and then a child keyword that is California, and another child keyword that is Los Angeles. Then if you click this button, it's going to write those keywords in the same hierarchy that you've created. So it would go USA, then California, then it would go Los Angeles. If you don't have that selected, then when you export, it's not going to maintain that hierarchy, and so you, it's going to write them as, as, as flat keywords. So each, like Los Angeles, is not going to be under California, and California is not going to be under USA. Each one of them are going to be a flat keyword. So if you guys do a lot of keywording and, and you keep a, a very strict and organized keyword hierarchy, keep that selected. But if not, it's not a really a big deal. 
The next option is watermarking. Now we went previously over how to set up the watermarks. I think I might have showed you quickly how to export with those watermarks, but basically if you want a watermark, you just check this button and then you choose which watermark you want to use. You can see the LJP one size fits all preset. I think that's the one that we created in the actual tutorial uh, in the previous chapter. And next we have post-processing. So this is what you want Lightroom to do after you've, it finishes exporting those images. Right now I have it set to do nothing, but you can have it set to show the images in Explorer, to open the images in Adobe Photoshop, or to open another application, or to uh, go to the Export Actions folder now, which will actually take me there right now. Um, that's the Export Actions folder itself. But uh, if you're doing you want to be careful with this because if you're exporting 500 files and you accidentally have this selected it's going to take forever because it's going to open every single one of those into CS5 afterwards. So typically I have this set to do nothing otherwise you can use Show and Explorer which is the other useful kind of feature so you can see what you just export, uh, opened up. Um, if you have this set onto open another application it'll ask you to choose the other application um, and if you don't set another application it'll say you have not chosen an application to open the file so it's unable to export. I'm just going to leave this as show and explorer so we can see whatever we're exporting. I'm going to hit export now. I forgot what settings I set, but it doesn't really matter anyway. So right now we can see that exported file came right here. Looks like it actually applied the stamp I had accidentally selected, so whatever. Um, and it actually already shrunk it. We had it this prepared for web, I think, so it shrunk it to that size. So, All right, so in the next tutorial we're going to go over setting up the presets for export, which will kind of give you guys an idea of what size and resolution you want your guys' stuff to be when you're printing for or when you're printing, when you're doing web work, when you're doing email type stuff and everything else.